Welcome again to GCN and today I've got the pleasure of being joined by Greg Foote of the Head Squeeze channel. Hey guys. Today we're going to be answering the question, what is better, a lighter bike or a leaner body? And that's why Greg's here, to make sure we get the science 100% accurate. I think I'm also here because um, here you've got a professional athlete, a lean body, and, and I'm pretty much the opposite. It's probably my role. Um, but yes, we do want to make sure this is an accurate and an objective test. So we've come in, we're going to simulate the real world environment using this incredible treadmill we've got here at the University of Bath. Um, now what we're going to do, what this allows, it allows us to strip out so it's traffic, um, rolling resistance, wind resistance, and all these other factors. So yes, it isn't a real world test, but it's the best we can do, and it's gonna be scientific. Yeah, it's controlled conditions, and it also allows us to go up to an 8% gradient, which is just the sort of thing that the Tour de France riders are gonna be doing this year, twice in fact, when they take on the Alpe d'Huez two times in one stage. We're gonna be doing two different speeds. We're gonna do eight kilometers an hour and 16 kilometers an hour. First one's kind of average club cyclist level. Second one's kind of average professional level. Neither of which, really, I tick the box, um, as I found out earlier when I gave it a go. Some professional cyclists actually use treadmills to train on. Chris Bourbon's one of those during his career, and Bradley Wiggins now has one in his shed. It's like the world's greatest turbo trainer, but it does take a while to get the hang of. We're using my old race bike. We're going to add 2.6 kilograms to bring it up to the weight of an entry-level bike. Then we'll compare the results with Greg riding. As you can see, he's got muscles, unlike me, and weighs an extra 10 kilograms. So the first thing we want to look at is the effect of the bike's mass. Now the bike itself weighs 7.6 kilograms, but we've also added in the weight of the harness as well, taking that up to 8.2 kilograms in total. So that plus Dan's lean mean fighting machine weight takes us up to 81 kilograms dead on. So uh, first of all, we're going to go for the 8% incline, but at the 8 kilometers an hour. We're going to have a look at the power required to tackle that. So we've got a power tap power meter on his back wheel there, and that's going to give us a signal through to this. We're going to be able to see his current power output. And also, once he's up to speed and that power's kind of settled, I'm going to hit lap. We're going to measure for one minute, and we're going to take the average power over that one minute. Right, Dan, one minute. It starts now. So what power are we holding now, roughly? We're about kind of 150-ish, probably, on average. I'm having to concentrate on this... Uh... Oh. Treadmill as much as anything. Well, yeah, when I tried it, I was all over the place. It just felt like it was going to whip away from right underneath me. So uh, <laughs> if, the, if the professional's struggling, you'll see me back there, right in the, uh, the middle of the map. It's because I struggle going this slow, Greg. Oh, right, OK. <laughs> That's fast for me, that. <laughs> Good work. Uh, just over 15 seconds left. Okay, five seconds left. Three, two, one. Average lap power, one, four, six watts. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some mass onto Dan. So Jonathan, if you can just load him up, that'd be great. We're gonna add 2.6 kilogram of mass. Um, it's just sand and water in a drinks bottle. And that's gonna be the equivalent of him using a, an entry level bike. We'll have a look at the difference. So, just gonna get himself balanced up. All right, I think I'm there. All right, one minute starts now. So remember, what we're looking at is the effect of what makes the biggest difference. Is it a light bike compared to a normal bike? And is it a heavy guy compared to a normal guy? Is it worth you really spending thousands of pounds on a top level bike? Does it make that much difference to the power? Or perhaps should you just uh, cut down a little bit on calories? This will show us. So that's 30 seconds through. Good work. And you can see much difference in power on this one. Uh, this is greater and at about 155. So that's increase of about seven watts, roughly. Eight seconds left. Five, four, three, two, one. Stopping it there. Average power 155. So that's a uh, nine watt increase with the additional mass of 2.6 kilograms. Of course, that must be about 7%, is it, greater? That takes a bit of math. Just, they can't that. just do it. I know I'm from head squeeze and everything, but you know, need to use some electronics to work that one out. Um, right, it's time to up the speed. All right, whenever you're ready. Okay, and go. A little bit harder at 16 k's now. 
I'm just, I'm starting to Wait sweat. Wait till you get on. Yeah, I know, that's, that's the problem. <laughs> and how's the power looking at this speed? Yeah, so much higher. We're averaging about 280 over 280 watts. So that doubles speed and the watts have jumped massively. This is bringing back some nightmares of uh, laboratory testing. What do you have to do? Have you done the Alpe d'Huez Hill as well? I have done it, yeah. How did it feel? Not, uh, safer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, man, that's you done. Done. 279 watts I got as the average there. 279 at the doubled speed. So uh, now it's time to put the mass in. Last push. It's not even broken a sweat. I'm ready. Okay, lap starts now. One minute. So this must be a weird experience because you probably, when you went up that big hill yeah. uh, in Alpe d'Huez, you know, they're eight and a bit percent, you were probably on a good bike. Yeah, it wasn't a good bike and it's, well, you can start to understand why riders take their bottles out before they get to the end of races, not just because they don't need to drink anymore. Because actually just with watering the bottles, it weighs quite a bit. This just shows you the difference. You're now right up at about 325 watts. So you're right up there again, a huge jump. About, you know, over 40 watts, and that's just going from you know really really good bike to entry level bike. Yeah, it makes a huge difference, and I think that's exactly what we're going to show in this experiment. Why riders spend so much time losing weight from themselves and also from the bike. And uh, kudos as well, respect. What talking whilst uh, also keeping the balance, pretty impressive. Uh, five seconds left. Keep pushing it. Three, two, one. Stopping there. Three one nine watts was the average. 319. Good effort. So we can, if you just hold there for one set, we'll keep going maybe. We can crunch little numbers. Maybe I can chuck out a percentage increase. All right, man, I've crunched the numbers a bit. Yeah. Um, really interesting, actually. So for the slower speed, the 8 kph, yeah. uh, the addition of the weight, so basically what happens when you go from a really good bike to a, a kind of entry level bike, that was a 6.2% increase in power. Yeah. All right. And then once we increase the speed, up to, what was it, 16, 16, 16 kph, yeah. um, that was a 14% increase. Oh, wow, that's a, sorry. So it just shows Six you. 6 to 14, so yeah. the faster you go in, the better you are, the more beneficial it is to have a lighter bike. Exactly, that showed it really nicely. Perfect, your turn then. I'm looking forward to seeing how you get on. I'm really not, <laughs> I'm really not. So it's time now to see the difference that some excess body weight makes. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Normal body weight, not scrawny body weight. Right, so without the bike, just me on my own, I was 70.2 kilograms. With the bike and the harness, that came up to 78.4. Greg, when he got on the scales, 80.8 kilograms. With the bike and the harness, nice round figure <laughs> of 89 kilograms. So he's going to start as well with the 8 kilometers per hour, 8%, and then we're going to try and get him up to 16 kilometers per hour at the same gradient of 8%. But first, he needs to get his balance, so let's see how he gets on with that. Right, we started. 55 seconds to go. <laughs> so we've already done the experiment with actually 2.6 kilograms on the bike. The total difference in weight between myself and Greg is 10.6 kilograms. Let's see what change that makes the power that you need to do on 8% gradient. Average for the minute over 8% gradient and 8 kilometers per hour. So one test you'd have to do. Let's double the speed up and see what difference that makes. Great. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> How do you make your legs move so fast? You think you're going to be able to do that for a minute? <laughs> so we're at the start of the minute. Go. We're already six seconds in. 52 seconds to go. Average power already significantly higher than when he was doing eight kilometers per hour. Same gradient, remember, it's just double the speed. The faster you're going, the more professional you are, the bigger difference the extra weight should make. And we're gonna see exactly how much difference in just a few moments when Greg's finishes one minute effort. 25 seconds to go now, over halfway there. The greater the total weight of a rider and bike, the more power is required to ride uphill at a given speed. 
This is shown as my power increased when we added weight to my bike and Greg's power was higher than mine because he weighs more. In our experiment, weight was not added to the rotating parts of the bike. An increase of one kilogram in the total weight meant that to maintain a given speed, Greg and I's respective power to weight ratios increased by 0.025 watts per kilo. We can see that being lighter helps you to go further and faster as you will use less energy at a given speed. So where is best to lose weight from? We think that most people could lose a kilo or two from their body weight without much trouble or any expense. For the pros there is a UCI lower weight limit of 6.8 kilograms for race bikes meaning that only so much weight can be shaved from the bike. In fact as you'll see from our pro bike features most bikes for races such as the Tour de France need to have weight added to them in order to meet this limit. Well done Greg. Well that was a great effort and there's some massive differences in the power and the reason we've got head squeeze along here today <sighs> is because they're used to doing these kind of number crunching experiments on a day to day basis. But you're going to need to go over there now, just click on Greg's hot wheezing face and you're going to get there.